Hello everyone, and welcome to Minecraft Math, where I build things in Minecraft to help you prove, to help prove some kind of math concept. Um, look, someone left a fake apple on my desk. So, let's get started. So what I have for you today is kind of large, but it gets the point across. It is this. What is this? It's a big triangle, that's what it is. And it's got some patterns on it, we can see that. See some redstone blocks. Looks like they form an L with some yellow. That's repeated all the way down. And you got some stuff at the bottom. And over here we got some controls. Ooh, weird numbers on the top. I don't know what those are. Display totals. Okay, let's pull this. Ooh, got colors on the side. Seems to match up with these colors. And pull to start. Okay, let's let's pull it. See what happens. Oh, we got a minecart. It's falling. It's falling. Oh, it's went that way. Awesome. Oh, there's another one. Oh, and there's another one. Wow. There's a lot of minecarts. It's still falling. Choosing paths. Looks like the green blocks push out. And it goes down a different way. And we have numbers on the side that are increasing. Oh, that one went down the yellow path. And they're starting to stack at the bottom. So what this is, is it's a demonstration of binomial distribution and it's also a demonstration of Pascal's triangle so you can't obviously tell this is a triangle and if you count the layers there's one two three four five six seven eight layers down nine rows at the bottom and how it works as you can see there are green blocks and these green blocks push out randomly when a mine cart lands on it so if you see one fall let's follow one here it comes Triggers a trip by a hook. Piston pushes out and pushes it down a path. Oh, this one's going all the way down the side. Wow. This time we went this way. And these little things right here are to um, combine the two paths in the middle. So, see this one went this way, came down. This one came from here, came down the same way. So, goes all the way down, just randomly chooses a path, and works its way all the way down to the bottom where it trips a final hook. And falls all the way down to these stacks at the bottom that are slowly starting to build up. So let's go behind it and see what's going on back here. Not too thick, it's just basically, I'll show you one right here. It's a bunch of these repeated over again. You have a dropper with a sword and redstone. You see the redstone disappeared. Let's wait for another tick. All the redstone disappeared again. Goes into the hopper, receive it. Basically a randomizer, you have a torch and a repeater, signals checker of one, so if the signal is exactly one, that piston will extend, signal reaches, that piston will extend, and no matter what happens, it will always happen two ticks later. That's once it receives the signal, that's what this is, and this is just repeated a bunch of times down, all the way down. Set so chooses which of the pistons to extend, and it pushes the minecart. So the minecart will either end up here or here. And no matter which one it ends up, same thing's going to happen. It's going to go left or right. So eventually, the minecarts will trickle down all the way to the bottom. So now, let's do a quick time lapse of the rest of this.
and that's it. So you didn't see in the text, but what it said is row 5 is overflowing, stopping the collection because it passed the white line. But this is a pretty nice curve, nice bell-shaped curve. So we're going to go into the math behind what makes this possible next episode. But basically, it's binomial because you can call left to pass, right to fail, and this is counting the amount of passes and fails, all fails, all passes. And it's Pascal's triangle, because that's how you get the end probabilities by doing that kind of stuff. So you got this nice cool graph, and it forced it by default. So lever's still pulled, but it's not sending anything, so you can just flip that back. So it forced the ending. So we're going to clear it. This is really cool. Whee! I think that's the coolest part of this whole thing. It's making data and watching it sink into lava. So... If you notice, there's this, and all these numbers. Well, I was talking about how you saw in the ch the, just the droppers, there was a sword and a piece of redstone. You could either send the sword or the redstone, output a signal of 2, output a signal of 1. It's a 50-50 chance. It's a 1 to 1 ratio. So there are all these other ratios listed. There's 1 to 2, which would mean 1 redstone, 2 swords. 1 to 3, 1 redstone, 3 swords. 1 to 4, 1 redstone, 4 swords or two to three, a redstone and some other items so they don't stack, and three swords. And you control that by coming over here. And it has the same thing right here. You have one to one, one to two, one to three, one to four, and two to three. And the probability of a so-called success underneath, or success is going to the right. So this last row would be all successes. So the lamps, it, it doesn't really matter with the lamps. These you could send us signal signal if you want to. But what these command blocks do is they set new droppers and they set it to replace so all the items get thrown everywhere so you probably don't want to spam these or you'll create tons of items that you have to go pick up. So just find the one you want and pull it. So let's do a 1 to 3 ratio. So you can pull it and pull it back and no, nothing really changed but if you come over here you can see this light turned on. That's accomplished with just a redstone block. That's what these five things do. They set the rest of them to air and their specific one to redstone. So now, let's run this data collection again. This time, I'll do a faster time lapse and show you the stuff underneath being collected. And you'll notice something a little different. So let's take a look. Okay, so what have we got here? This doesn't seem the same number we had. 1 to 3 sets a 1 in 3 chance. There's a 75% chance of success and 25% chance of failure. So we don't have the regular bell curve up. Oh, seven's overflowing. See, it hit the white line. So more can fall in, but it shouldn't really be enough to make it like get clogged. Even that one hit 39. Oh no, it doesn't. But yeah, this is not the same curve we had before. Uh, the curve before was straight, symmetric in the middle. This one seems squished to the right. It's skewed. We have a, quite a few in this row 9, as opposed to having 0 before. And we have practically none over here. So you can play around with these probabilities. And I might show like one more. This one's really skewed. So you can predict what's going to happen. Play around with it. In total, to fill up the entire thing, maybe takes like five minutes. And the reason for that is the minecart's full. Uh, going this way requires going down, back, and down. That's the longest path. But coming along this side just falls down twice. So coming down this way is fast, but coming that way is slow. 
So if you have a minecart that goes this way, that's relative average speed, average speed, slow, slow, and then end up right here. This one will be fast, fast, averagely fast, averagely fast, and end up here faster. You don't want the minecarts colliding. Because then, if two hit the tripwire hook, they'll both go the same way, end up in the same place, and you don't want that. So they can get pretty close, but it's timed so that they should never get close enough. So yeah, binomial distribution. Nice, clear way of seeing the graph. Um, next, I will do the math behind it. I should talk a little bit about the redstone. So we got the hopper timer. This tests for a score of R9. Notice it's not displaying the R scores, it's displaying totals, which are different. So you got the scores, R7 is at least 36. So it says, row 7 is overflowing, stop the collection in blue. Output's right here. It sets a redstone block, which you might be able to see. Yeah, that one right there, which cuts off the timer. There's a hop, big hopper timer up here. Redstone keeps flowing through. It's one piece of redstone circling around right there. But this cuts it off. It doesn't allow this to summon a minecart right beneath, which should go down. So that's the manual cutoff, and that's why this lever, when you unpull it, would summon the redstone block to stop it, but it's already there. Under here, you have the resets for all the scores, which are R9 through R1, and player row 1, an imaginary player, total score to 0, and the total total score to 0. And yeah, these are all relative, so you can see you got set block dropper, replace, can't do keep because then it won't do anything. Items, you got a sword in slot 0 with a count of 1, and redstone in slot 1 with a count of 1. Here you got sword slot 0, sword slot 1, redstone slot 2. All the way back here, you got long one. Sword, sword 1, sword 2, sword 3, redstone 4, apple sword 0, 1, 2, redstone 3, apple 4. Just chosen apple, why not? So that's binomial distribution in Minecraft. Um, next I'll be going to the math behind it, so it might get a little intense, but basically that's it. Pretty interesting concepts with minecarts, randomness, and setting blocks affecting randomness. The best spot to view it is right here, because if you notice, back up, my credits are disappearing. So, uh, that's going to be it. Thanks so much for watching, and be sure to check out the next video if you think your brain can handle it. It may get a little crazy, but yeah, thanks for watching.